Shabbat Shalom and welcome to Thought for Shabbat. This week's Torah portion, Vayigash, is one of the most powerful and evocative portions in the whole Torah. Joseph is to confront his brothers who don't recognize him after years of estrangement, but they've come to Joseph because he's the vice president, essentially, of Egypt, and there's a famine in the land of Israel and they need food. He comes, they come to him, and he says to everybody, his courtiers and his assistants, get out. And then he lets out a shrigavolt, a cry that could be heard, heard all across the land of Egypt, even to the Pharaoh's palace. And he says, I am Joseph, your brother. And they are dumbfounded because they don't know what to make of it. I often think about this portion on so many levels. First, the personal level. Why is it that men have so much trouble crying in front of others, showing their emotions? It is understandable that human beings, even male human beings, have feelings and that they are entitled to show them, just as Joseph did his brothers. There was no need for him to clear the room. He probably could have used the support of those of his trusted advisors. But I think there was a bit of shame for him that a man of his stature ought not show emotion. We need to change that dynamic, to change that narrative, so that men can openly and freely express their emotions, just as it ought to be for women. Friends, we also come to this portion, and this portion is often framed as a portion of reconciliation on a macro level. That here, this group of brothers did Joseph wrong, and only because of his forgiving heart was he able to really uh, allow them to come into the land and then, of course, uh, to be of assistance and help to them in their moment of need. As we think about the world, as we think about Israel and what's happening in Gaza, is there reconciliation in the future? Is there a way for there to be forgiveness for the wrongs that have been done? Not right now. But hopefully, and just maybe, we will, as a people, get to a place where we can concentrate more on the future than on the past. Because it seems to me that the narratives of the people involved will never convince the other people that their narrative is right or true. These are feelings, and feelings don't base themselves in fact. They base themselves in uh, how one reacts to the situation around them. But perhaps there is a shared future between Israelis and Palestinians. Perhaps it's going to take a lot of reconciliation to get to that point. I pray with you, and I pray in my heart every single day that there will be a place and a time when the humanity of each and every human being can be seen even in the eyes of one's enemies so that they can find a mutually beneficial future together. That's why it's called a prayer is because it's hard to imagine that it could come to reality. But the truth of the matter is, we've all faced tough times, and prayer is a way of inspiring us to get to the holier spaces, the higher levels of humanity. So, one, men feel. And part of men feeling and being honest about their pain and about their, their emotions will also help with the second, making the world a more calm and better place for humanity, God willing. Friends, please join us uh, tonight at 6 p.m. special time this Friday and next Friday, 6 p.m. for Shabbat services right here at Temple. We look forward to seeing you all. Take good care. Bye-bye. Be well. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.